Hi, welcome to Lisa's Home Show. Um, I totally didn't name it Lisa's Home Show, but my friend Kristen, who lives far, 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 far away from here, but um, is a fellow hydro mom and mother of Cayman and Kobe, she called it that last week when I had a, a video up on the blog, and I thought it was so cute, Lisa's Home Show. So I'm going to call it that, Lisa's Home Show. So, welcome to Lisa's Home Show. Um, a few things today. I actually made some notes because I didn't want to forget anything. So, most important thing today, Yoga Hut is now open. Officially open. And in honor of my late father, I must say that it is the grand opening. Because he would always look at those signs. Everything always has a grand opening. He's like, why does it always have to be a grand opening? Why can't it ever just be an opening? So, Jennifer, my question for you is this. Is it an opening or is it a grand opening? I hope it's grand. I think it's grand. Especially with that new doormat that I put in front of the Yoga Hut door. It's really cute. And if you want to see it, go to Yoga Hut and take some classes. Because um, you'll look amazing and fit. Um, just like Jennifer. And have you looked at her website yet? www.yoga-hut.com And look at pictures of my sister, taken by my friend Charlene, of Charlene hardyphotography.com. <laughs> I'm getting all this right. Um, Jennifer looks amazing. Uh, so, go look at her website and see her pictures. She's beautiful. And then go look at the studio and take some classes. And you'll feel good and you'll look good. And I'll join you there in January when I can do yoga. So, um, about Jennifer opening her studio, I am so proud of her I could just scream. <laughs> Because it's my sister, and she just opened a business, and it's great. And she's the kind of person I admire most in life. Somebody who has an idea, or a goal, a dream, and just does it. I think so many people just sit around waiting for somebody else to do something, or think it's too far-fetched, or afraid of failure, and they don't do it. And Jennifer said, I'm going to do it. And I'm not the one that told you. <laughs> one of the reasons, because somebody told her she couldn't. Here's the thing about us Coats girls, um, so I made a name, Coats. Um, we don't like to be told we can't do something. And oftentimes if we're told we can't do something, we do it just to prove everybody wrong. For example, when Alexandra was born, my firstborn child, I had her picture taken professionally every two weeks for the first year. So on her first birthday, I had 24 pictures hung up on the wall. It was cute. And um, everybody told me, you'll never do it for your second baby. And I was furious. I was furious. Because everybody doubted me. I'm like, what are you thinking? So you better believe that little Miss Lorelei had her picture taken every two weeks. I had to prove everybody wrong. So Jennifer and I, and I think all of us coats, family, people, siblings, and our mother especially. We don't like to be told what we can or can't do. Um, so what I was thinking this week, how proud I was of Jennifer for having a dream, a goal, an ambition, and just doing it. It had me thinking of my favorite movie quote of all time, um, which actually doesn't come from Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins is my favorite movie, and everybody that knows me knows how much I love Mary Poppins. And Jennifer and I happen to quote Mary Poppins probably on a daily basis. But this is how it comes from Mary Poppins. It comes from Rocky Balboa. And I happen to have it right here on the computer so you can hear it. And this entire quote doesn't pertain to Jennifer in this circumstance, but one part. So let me just play it for you because it's really great. And let me turn it up so you can hear it. Come on. And when I saw this in the movie theater and I heard this quote, it really spoke to me. And I've been quoting it to people ever since. I may have quoted it to you before. I quote it to everybody. Here we go. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. 
Now, if you know what you're worth, then go out and get what you're worth. But you got to be willing to take the hits and not point and finger saying you ain't where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that. Okay, wasn't that inspirational? So there's a few parts to that quote. Part A. Life ain't all sunshine and rainbows. This is the truth. I know this um, as well as anybody. Um, everybody has trials they face. And lately I've been thinking about the word trial. I don't really like the word trials. I don't know. I think I just like the fact that we all have experiences and some are a little more difficult to deal with. Um, but the beauty of it all is that when we face these things that are a little more difficult, somehow we come out ahead in the end. Um, it's true. It's always true. The second part, um, part B, actually this is not in order of the quote but I'm going to skip to a part at the end and then go back to the middle because the middle part is what pertains to Jennifer. The end point that he makes he says, is like don't blame others. Like If you're having problems or things aren't going your way, don't blame others. It drives me crazy when people put blame on others. You know, if, you've, if something's not going your way, if you're having a problem, get to the bottom of it. Solve the problem. Move forward. Stop pointing fingers. I love that part. Okay. This part C, the third part, and this is the part that pertains to Jennifer, is, and I love, my favorite part of the quote actually, is when he says, if you know what you're worth, then go get what you're worth. I love that. So Jennifer, she knew that she was worth it. She knew she could have a business. She knew she could run a studio. She knew she could be an archaeologist. She is an archaeologist. Did you know that? She goes on digs like in South America and she's still going to. She just got to get this up and running and she, once it's up and running and she's earning the big bucks, she can close it for a month or something and go on a dig. Um, but she knows what she's worth and she goes and gets it. She doesn't sit around and complain or wait for others to do something. She does it. So Jennifer, I'm proud of you. I love you. Um, so anyways, that's the inspirational quote of the week and I hope you like it as much as I do. Um, the other thing, right now in the Sorensen home we are in the midst of doctor season and I call it doctor season because my children, it's a phone, <laughs> it's my mother-in-law, Susan, I'm not answering the phone right now, I'll call you back later, no, I'm going to be trouble, if you watch this, then you'll know I hung up on you, if you never watch this, then you'll never know, but, Anyways, back to doctor season. All my children have birthdays within a few weeks of each other. So then we have all these, you know, annual visits to things um, all grouped together. So I mentioned it a week or so ago on my blog that we have a lot of appointments coming up. Um, audiology, ophthalmology, neurology, neurosurgery. We've got a CAT scan coming up. We've got all, like, the birthday well checkups coming up. Elizabeth just had hers. Lots of appointments coming up. Um, so we're going to be really busy with those. But the, the exciting thing is that this week, Elizabeth has a neurology appointment in Spokane. Um, which is good because her seizures have been getting really strong, a little bit long, and she stops breathing during them, which is obviously very concerning to me and Donald. So I'm anxious to go see her neurologist and talk about it, see what we can do. Anyway, so we're going to see um, the neurologist on Wednesday, I think, in Spokane. And here's why this is so exciting. When we left the hospital to bring me home a couple weeks ago, Donald mistakenly left our backpack in the lobby of the hospital because he was sitting there waiting for them to wheel me down. And when they wheeled me down, he just stood up and left the backpack there. And the backpack had my iPod in it. And I don't really care so much about the iPod as much as I care about not being able to play words with friends, with all my friends. I love playing words with friends and what I used to do with my obsession with words with friends is keep my iPod with me in my pocket and then I just play all day. And I haven't had it, um, so I've had to play just when I'm at the computer and then I hardly play. So if you're one of my words with friends, friends? That's why I haven't been playing much. If it goes like two or three days, I just never think about it when I'm just up at the computer. So, um, the good news is we're going to Spokane, and the hospital says they have our backpack. 
And when I talked to them, I had them look and they said there was an iPod in the backpack. So I hope when we get there, the iPod's 